Hello, Anthony Deep here from anthonydeep.net, and this is a follow-up to my post about the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder. Uh, the first impressions post is on my blog at anthonydeep.net. This is the H6 down here. You can see how I have it set up. I've currently got it on the X and Y module is attached with this small windscreen, which came as part of the base kit. I bought this from Taramara Music, which is uh, taramusic.com.au. I went in and made the uh, purchase there. Lovely stuff. Go check them out. Um, and I also bought the accessory kit, which amongst other things included this thing. Um, anyway, onto the device. Six input potentially recorder. It's got a, you've got a built-in detachable stereo pair and four XLR TRS combo inputs. I also bought the... Uh, XLR TRS combo module, which gives you an extra two, so you get six all up. So you can use any six mics, whether it's the Zoom proprietary mics. No, you can actually put in your own standard mics. For this test, though, I'm using the ones that came supplied, which is this X and Y kit and this uh, mid-side uh, module as well. So basically, I'll show you what this video sounds like with me talking with the inbuilt camera from the Mac. So this is just a demo of the Mac EyeSight internal microphone. As no noise removal at all. This is the pure sound coming from the webcam right there. There is no external microphone, no zoom. This is the direct sound from the Mac's internal camera. And now we're back to the Zoom H6 in X and Y. Now I call this the press conference position because I feel like Oh yeah, the uh, the boys they played really well today. Uh, just not the result we're after, but I feel like we've, we've you know we've got we're always improving. We'll take it one week at a time because I feel like this is a this is like a sports press conference position. I've got this mounted on a tripod that I had lying around. You can't see it there, unfortunately. Sorry, just this little little tripod that I had lying around from a toy camera from years and years ago. So it's a bit off to my left because of desk space constraints. Um, I'm now talking straight into it, basically. And it's in stereo configuration, and I'm talking over it somewhat, and it still sounds very clear. It's not very sibilant. Now, my voice tends to be a bit hissy, can also be a bit nasally, and I don't think it uh, does uh, too much damage to my voice by accentuating that very much. I like how my voice sounds through this. Um, and this is the X and Y with this foam windscreen, which, as I said, I'm pretty sure came with the base, um, base configuration of it out of the box. This mid-side mic came base out of the box. There's, apart from the XLR TRS combo I mentioned that you can use for an extra two inputs, you can also get a shotgun um, hypercardioid mic, I believe, uh, module. But for now, we're using the X and Y. Now, you've heard what it sounds like with the windscreen on. Puh, 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 puh. Still a bit, you know, a bit uh, poppy there. If I pull this off carefully, you now hear that it opens up the frequency response a bit. It gets a lot more of the high end and even from here that already clips so you would have to be careful about using uh this thing at least to get um dialogue for instance or speech if you're doing an interview and be aware that it is a bit more sibilant and bright especially when you're dead onto the microphones like this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach this i'm going to call it a dead kitten um don't quote me on that if that's a proper term for it because everyone has their own. And now you see this is attached. It's a bit more conspicuous, let's say, but it uh, does a good job of isolating, of um, isolating some of those plosive. Puh, puh, puh. You know, it handles it better. I do have it at a fairly high gain setting. I am in a noisy uh, brick garage, basically. This is sort of my project studio, which I've got to clean up a bit once I get more time. But you see, this does make a difference. Um, p -p 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 completely um, outperforms this in that regard. Now, what I'll do now is if you've heard the X and Y, I'll switch over to the mid-side pattern capsule module. And now that I've reactivated uh, the mic by pressing the input buttons, which you can't see, the input, oh, can I pull my monitor down? Nope. Sorry about that. I'm using my iMac screen. Um, you can now hear the difference. The stereo width's a bit less. 
Um, my voice is a bit more direct on, even at this position. If I give it a bit more gain, maybe, you can hear there's a bit of a higher noise floor. It's a bit, there's a bit more self noise, I guess, uh, but a bit less ambient noise, which is strange, and a bit less width in the ambient noise. Now, I have to check my settings, excuse me, because I have tampered with the uh, side width adjustment, the side, um, side volume. So currently, the side mic level is off. So this is the mid capsule only. Now I've recommended uh, that you could use this for capturing speech quite easy. Now, as you can see, I can pull this camera completely out of shot and give you an upper body shot. Well, almost out of shot. Thank you, iMac. Stay. And now I'm giving you fairly direct sound, but you can't see the camera in the shot. Um, I'll bring it back down again and let me just gradually bring the side mic up, which is a one knob adjustment here. And, oh, wrong way. And we'll bring more side, side into the equation. And this is a unity sort of setting. It's at zero. And you can hear that there is a fair, fairly decent set of stereo width. Again, a bit of self noise, although it could be because of the USB connection as well. I find that for some reason with the USB connection, there tends to be a bit more noise in the capsules, which, you know, obviously there might be some, you know, electronic, uh, electric isolation issues. Um, well, as I do that, my other monitor has gone down, so definitely could be some sort of electronic isolation issues. Now again, close is a problem. This is more made for the X and Y capsule. I can put it over. It slips on fairly well. P -p does a fairly good job, high in the plosives. Again, if I add on this dead kitten, p -p you know, it's a bit less effective on here and it does muffle the sound a bit more. But then again, you know, that's part of the accessory kit. So um, the accessory kit was a, a, a few extra dollars on top of everything else. I really recommend getting the accessory kit. You get a remote, you get the extra um, the extra dead kitten, and you get a few other goodies as well. Overall, this H6 is an impressive product. Now, I need to mention as well, if I didn't mention it beforehand, this can actually act as a six in, two out uh, USB interface. So think if you focus right, Scarlet's that sort of thing. It can do uh, more than that in terms of inputs and outputs over USB. Plus, it's a portable recorder. It runs off batteries and USB power. It can take, I believe, up to 128 gigabyte SD cards. It's got an SD XC uh, input uh, slot. Um, it's got uh, dual monitoring, so you can actually monitor via headphones like I'm doing now, which is straight analog. I, I'm not sensing any latency here, which is what you want when you're monitoring. Um, but it's also got a line out that you can run to your camcorder like a Canon. Again, I'm running this as a USB interface, as a stereo mix to photo booth right now, which I'm using to film this video. And I'm astounded. I'm still on the mid side in case anyone hasn't worked it out yet. I am astounded by the quality of this uh, recorder completely blows my mind how good and clear everything is. I'll do a few uh, audio snippets, dedicate audio snippets in my uh, isolation booth, which I'll also upload. Probably should speak straighter into the mic. Uh, it's a bit off center because of my keyboard, yada, yada, yada. Look, if you're in the market for a six in, two out interface, or you want a portable recorder, you'd be hard pressed to find anything as good as this in terms of not even plugging in external mic shit. I haven't tested the pre's out on this thing. I will do that soon. I bought um, a few cheaper, I bought an Audio Technica cheapy uh, kit, 200 and something dollars with the AT2020 and I think the 2041 small diaphragm condenser. Can't wait to test them out. I also bought a Rode NTG3 shotgun mic, which I'm dying to test out. And look, I'm really excited to get my hands on this and actually explore it a bit more. But first impressions, absolutely gun piece of gear. If you're in the market, Trust me, Zoom H6, you'll be hard pressed to beat it at the price point. You know, maybe if you spend a, a thousand or so dollars on top you, over it, you might find something better than it. But wow, honestly, it's a gun PC kit. And I reckon if you've got the money to get it and you want something that you can do both portable uh, location recording and say, you know, portable multi track recording, hook it up to your laptop, run it on uh, Cubase LE, which is included, or something like Pro Tools Logic whatever you can get to, to interface with it. 
And this is something you've got to have in your kit bag, guys. You've got to have your H6 in your kit bag. Trust me, you won't regret it. Thanks, guys, for AnthonyDeep.net. I'm Anthony Deep. Have a good night. Okay, I had to do an update. This is the first mic I've tried, and with the H6 as an external mic. Have a look at it. Shaw SM7B. I am on the 7 gain setting, and it is coming through, and my voice is hovering around minus 6. This H6 is outperforming my Machionics in terms of gain. Now, for the uninitiated, gain is an amplitude volume boost to a microphone. It's not power as such, but it's a boost, I guess. It's how much uh, signal you can you, you can get out of the microphone. You give it more gain, you get more signal. So it increases, it decreases your noise floor, it increases the signal to noise ratio. Now, you might wonder why I'm holding it. I don't have my thread adapter, but I had to record this video. I'm so impressed right now. This handy recorder on four AA batteries and USB power is currently outperforming a mains powered mixing board in terms of gain. This thing will barely give a squeak without noise on the Mackie. And I'm sorry to Mackie, it's a great product, the Onyx 1620i, but in terms of preamps, the Zoom, I, I, can't, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. I love the SM7. I've never had it run decently or this well off anything but a, 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 a standalone pre. And just for a laugh, I've cracked out my Coles 4104B commentator's ribbon mic. Now, <laughs> again, completely outperforming the Machionics. It's completely outperforming anything I would expect it uh, to to go up against. Uh, a fraction of the cost, the Zoom. It's about half price to what I pay for the Mackie. It's got it's only got USB out given that it's not Firewire, but these days it's multi-track USB anyway, and I'm pretty sure it can do 9624 uh, six tracks over USB. Now, don't quote me on it. I haven't had a toy around with it yet. This mic is also notorious for needing gain. It is a ribbon mic. Even when I'm speaking this close, this mic is meant to be used like this. It's called a lip ribbon microphone. Uh, if you ever watch cricket, rugby league, this is the mic. Oh, absolutely marvelous stroke. Oh, he's gone, and it's a great try. Like, But really, listen to the sound of this. I'm hovering at minus 12, minus 9 when I peak, you know, even up around minus 6, maybe there. But I'm again, I'm on 7, and once I get over 7... It starts to get a bit noisy now. Something you couldn't hit with a high pa uh, low pass filter, rather, or Z noise, or uh, Sonox, or Isotope, maybe, if you were that desperate to get rid of noise. If you were doing a location recording uh, for, say, a soccer game like I love doing, and you had a commentator on this, and you had some sort of effects mics and all that jazz, this would blend in fairly well. Um, most preamps will give this a bit of hiss. It's a fairly low power mic. It's a design from, I think, the 1960s. I'm trying to have a look at the box here. It's not going to tell me, is it? No, it's not. Um, but it's a Coles ribbon mic. Uh, I know it's not the Coles. I think it's the 4038 that everyone still tries to use in recording. But this this H6 is legit. This H6 means business. I'm not processing this audio. That's why it's coming in sibilant. This mic's going to be sibilant. If you ever listen to any broadcast it's on, it is sibilant. Part of it's because I'm talking right up to it. Part of it's just because that's the way it normally sounds. I'm really... I'm in shock by this thing. I can't wait to try the NTG and stuff on it. Oh, guys, seriously. I'm, I'm head over heels for this thing. Someone send me some more Zoom. Sponsor me. I'm happy to touch any PC gear you want me to, mate. Anyway, for once again, for AnthonyDeep.net, I am Anthony Deep. Good night.